It's going to be very interesting now the dynamics between President Biden and Benjamin Netanyahu. There's a big difference between a president who is seeking re-election, also among the Jewish vote, and those that know they are lame ducks. And we have seen lame duck presidents in recent history take actions they knew would not be popular with, for example, Jewish voters, uh, George, the recognition of the PLO uh, uh, that was done in, uh, by, by the, the George. senior George uh, Bush. Uh, and then, of course, uh, ben, Barack Obama uh, abstaining during this for that uh, vote uh, condemning Israel at the Security Council. In a way, President Biden is going to be a little unfettered. He doesn't want to hurt Kamala Harris's chances, but he's going to be a little unfettered. He could be tougher on Benjamin Netanyahu than he would if he had been seeking re-election. Well, on the other hand, he's not looking for the Arab vote on the, in Michigan either, so <laughs> it goes either way. I mean, what people have to realize, he's still going to be president for six months. Look at what's happened in the last six months in the Middle East. Yeah. You know, we need to keep that in mind. That's why it's, I think it's important that Netanyahu meet Biden, because this is the current president of the United States. Whoever gets elected on November, in November is still not even going to become president until <clears throat> middle of January. So until then, who knows what's going to happen here? We need to be a friend. We have to have a friend in the White House, and we need decent communication with that friend. So I think it's just as important as it was two hours ago that he meets with Biden. Biden is a Biden is a weirdly impactful president vis-a-vis uh, -vis Israel. They all are, but in his case is very profound indeed. For one thing, despite his vilification by the Netanyahu government behind closed doors, he's not just the first U.S. president to visit during wartime. He declared himself a Zionist right. at a time when BDS gaslighting has turned that word into a slur. He's a genuine friend of Israel. When he labors so hard and so mightily against the forces of the universe and the government of Israel to organize for Israel a way out of this war that involves an alliance with Saudi Arabia and practically with NATO, that, is, that comes out of love for Israel. So when Biden goes, there may be a president in the White House who is less at loggerheads with whoever is the prime minister in Israel. That's conceivable. But there also, I think, will no longer be a president in the White House who loves Israel. He's, and he probably wants peace as much as anyone on this panel. He's the last of a generation. Yeah. I, I, I love of Israel, but wouldn't Joe Biden love to leave office with a uh, breakthrough Middle East agreement, like I'm you sure said, establishing uh, uh, relations between the Saudis and Israel and creating this Middle East NATO against Iran? That's a legacy achievement. Uh, it would. And uh, Joe Biden, this gives him even more motive. This is his chance, his only chance to achieve that over the next I, six months. I, I, so, I, I, so, yeah. I, I love Caleb's idea. If he uses his lame duck. Well, I, I don't know. Anybody, <laughs> I love my idea. Write it straight now. Give I, I send him a message. The deal of the century will be the story. I love my idea. Okay. I think it's. I think it's Joe Biden's idea right now. A legacy to leave, no doubt, might be important, but there's no doubt. Mark, that there are many people in this country right now very upset about the way things have traversed between Jerusalem and Washington when it came to holding up arms getting here. There were many people angry about the condemnation, about what was happening in terms of settlers, in terms of settlements as well. There are a lot of very emotive issues, and not everybody at this juncture is so happy with the way President Joe Biden has handled recent months. Your thoughts on how that could look different still within the Democratic Party? The Democratic Party, it's not likely to get better for, for Israel in that sense. Look, I mean, Joe Biden would probably vote for the Labor Party if he, were, if he lived in Israel. Maybe, maybe he'd vote for Yesh Atid, but he certainly wouldn't vote any, any further to the right. Um, Joe Biden is a traditional labor Zionist, so to speak, although he's not a, you know, he is a big on labor in the United States as well. So I don't think the people, the right side of the Israeli government or the people are going to be any happier with any other Democratic nominee. Um, they so all want not Kamala Harris. Kamala, I, not, I don't know Kamala Harris. We don't know really. We, we really don't know. I mean, she has long ties with the California Jewish community. She has strong ties. She got strong financial support from the um, Jewish community of California. We have no idea what her true policies are relating to the Middle East. And of course, she's married to a Jew. So we uh, really have ties with the California Jewish community. She married <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. So we really, but, but, but again, that may give her that may give her leeway to be more critical Ooh, of Israel. Well, we just don't. We just don't. We just don't know. It's too early now. Look, the the right in Israel very much is looking forward to a Trump presidency. They do not understand the one problem with the Trump presidency, and that's the fact that no one knows what Trump will do. It's a big unknown what he's going to do. He may love Israel, but he may not know any way to show it. You know what Trump won't do, which is pressure Israel and the Palestinians on humanitarian well, that and, question. Uh, right. you know, well, decency already, grounds. We're already contrary <laughs> yes. on a humanitarian issue. Tributes are coming in swift and fast. Josh Shapiro, one of the names we were mentioning right. earlier within the Democratic Party, calling Joe Biden one of the most consequential presidents in the history of the U.S., 
parting shots. I've got 20 seconds. The legacy he leaves. I think Biden's legacy is having defeated Trump in 2020. It's as simple as that. Absolutely that, but also passing some important legislation over the period of time he was president. Uh, I'd have to go with what Dan said, that he uh, beat, that he, uh, beating Donald Trump in that race, and I think that's how he's going to be mainly viewed in, in history, political history, for good or bad, depending on your view of Donald Trump.